The question is essentially how do we learn or how do we process information so that it ends up in our long-term memory. And what we know about that is that information first comes to us in sensory form. The things we see, the things we hear, the things we smell, the things we taste, the things we touch. And it comes through our senses, through our eyes, through our nose, through our mouth, through our ears. And it first enters our memory in the sensory register. That's our first memory system. And it enters the sensory register in raw and unprocessed form. We haven't thought about it yet. So something that we see will register like a snapshot. Something that we've heard will register like an echo. And we take in all sorts of this information. In fact, we take in about as much sensory information as slow broadband would take in every second. And we can't pay attention to it all at once. To give you an illustration, listen to my voice. Now look at the images on the screen and the things around you in the room. Now feel the shirt on your shoulders. Do you taste anything? Do you smell anything? Now try and pay attention to all of it at once. My voice, the things you see on the screen, the things you see in the room, the shirt on your shoulders, the things you smell, the things you taste. And chances are you can't. The reason is we can't pay attention to that much information at once. We can't think about it all. The things that we pay attention to in our sensory register, those are the things we can think about. And basically, those things get transferred into our working memory. Our working memory is like our mental whiteboard. It's a place where we can temporarily think about and process information. So if you need to remember a phone number, that's where you're thinking about and rehearsing that phone number so that you can remember it until you get to the telephone to dial. But we can also process information in working memory. If I say, what is the answer to 6 plus 3 plus 9, and you do that calculation, all of that has happened in your working memory. The problem is that our working memory is limited. We can only think about so many things at once. And that so many things is seven plus or minus two chunks of information. Let's try this out. What you're gonna see is a string of letters and numbers. And you're gonna see them for about five seconds. Try and remember as many of these as you can. Typically people remember only about five to nine of those, and that's because of the capacity of our working memory. We can only think about so many things at once before stuff starts spilling out of our working memory. We also know that there's an expiry date on that information in our working memory. There's a time capacity as well. Once we stop paying attention to that information, it's only going to last for about 20 to 30 seconds before we lose it. If we stop paying attention to something and don't pay attention to it again within that time, it's going to be lost to us forever. Working memory is the gateway to learning. So the things that we're thinking about in working memory have a chance of making it into our long-term memory. But it's not a given that just because we're thinking about it, it's automatically going to make it there. What we do matters. So the question is, what is the most important thing to do to get something from working memory into our long-term memory? Let me pose the question to you. What do you think is the most important factor in successful learning? Whether you intend to learn, whether you pay careful attention to the material, whether you're using your preferred learning style, the amount of time you spend studying, or how you think about the information while you're studying. Believe it or not, the answer is the last one. It's what we do with the information in working memory that matters most. That's not to say that the others aren't important, but what we find over and over and over again is that engaging in a deep level of processing actually facilitates effective learning. Now what I mean by a deep level of processing is really grappling with ideas as you encounter them. It could be elaborating on a new idea, it could be generating some questions that you have about that idea, it could be linking it to things that you already know or trying to apply that information to new contexts, each of those cases, you're really trying to understand the material as you encounter it. That deep level of processing is important. You can study for hours and hours, for weeks and weeks and months and months, but without a deep level of processing, chances are all you have is really surface learning 
and you won't learn everything that you require.